Hey folks, this is Vagrant. Welcome back to Disco Elysium. It is a brand new day, day three. I'm just going to put my uh, my bag back on so I can um, pick up any lovely bootles. And uh, yeah, it's a brand new day. Hoping this means the bridge waterway thingamajiggy has been fixed and we can cross over to the western side of Martinez. And where is Kitsuragi? <laughs> Kitsuragi, buddy. You know what? He'll he'll show up. It's fine. Kitsuragi. The door is closed. I can't remember where Kitsuragi is. <laughs> like we've been through this before. I thought he was just waiting for me, but I think he's downstairs, isn't he? There he is. Hello, buddy. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Do -do 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 -do. I want to talk about you, Kitsuragi. Me? Yes, you. I don't see how my life is pertinent to the investigation. Well, don't, you can't call me a lame bino, Claude. We'll work better together with a little more rapport. Hmm, that's a fair point. All right, for the good of the investigation, what do you want to know? Do you ever talk with yourself? What do you mean? You know, when you're thinking, do you ever have conversations with your brain? I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh. The lieutenant's conceptualization skills must be rather rudimentary. So you're saying your brain never just chimes in with advice or warnings or anything? I can't say that it does, no. When I need to think, I just use my notebook. The lieutenant produces his small blue notebook and idly thumbs through a few pages. We all have our different mediums. His is written. You're super lucid, yet psychedelic. You don't need office supplies to connect to your nervous system. You're special. That's all for now, let's turn in. Thank you very much. Let's change the subject. Yeah, he's clearly uncomfortable talking about himself. Plus, I, I look too fabulous to waste my time. Whoa, what's going on here? Hello. Who are these people? Are they the Hardy Boys? Um, <clears throat> so a couple things I want to talk about. Number one is that I am exceptionally tired. I have had about two hours of sleep. Um, I attempted to fix my sleep by staying up overnight because my sleep's been a bit of a disaster because, you know, insomnia, yada, yada. Um... And then I crashed at about 11 a.m. And then I woke up at 2. Well, it was, it was God. I, I remember seeing the clock say 11. So it was something past 11. So it was two and something hours of sleep. Um, so I'm a little bit in and out of it. But I have banana milk. <laughs> so I'm feeling good. Um, there's something I wanted to talk about. About what just happened. I can't remember what it was. Hmm. God, how you doing today, my man? Can I help you? Goodbye, God. Right, who are you people? The woman in an RCM patrol officer's uniform winces oh. as she notices you. The other officers. I would really prefer not to talk to you right now. Why do you want to? Oh, are you? Uh, why are you the cavalry? I'm definitely not the cavalry. You're a cop with the RCM, right? Yes, I am. Why do you want to talk to me? I don't know. I mean, uh, why would I want to talk to you? Let's just do the- why, I bring word of the end to come! <laughs> Doomsday Cop! <clears throat> Let's just do this by the book, okay? By the... Okay, fine. Let's talk. What did you want? Hmm. What does one talk about with a fellow officer? <laughs> You're the police, right? Cool. So am I. <laughs> what precinct are you from? What precinct? Fucking deranged lunatic. Sunglass wearing man pushes through his teeth. You're getting an intellectually unsatisfying vibe from this conversation. Maybe you're doing something wrong. You look like shit. Your ruffled face reflects in the man. I look fantastic. This is <laughs> this is fashion, right? It just hasn't caught on quite yet. And I don't mean that as a metaphor. It's what's on the inside that matters. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm going by here. Oh, you don't look great, buddy, if I'm honest. Oh, come on, Jean. It looks like it's been a rough week on him. It's not just this week. What do you want? There's something about this guy that matches with a face in your head. A similar, but different face. He might be wearing a disguise. Uh... Watch out for yourself, loser. That voice, so very familiar. Did you hear it when calling to your station and reporting your badge missing? I recognize your voice. Oh, really? I wonder where. 
You were there when I called in to report my badge. That's the where you remember me from? Maybe. Okay then. It's probably a coincidence. People sound alike. Goodbye. I wanted to um change my clothes for my Esperit Decker. Simple. Do we got anything that's gonna do my Esperit? There we go, Esperit. That's Bobby, no something, but puzzle. Oh, and I, oh no, use that one instead. It's better. Shivers and Esprit Deco. Put the boo. La papo. On something. Uh, nothing's been knocked down by it. Nope, okay. I mean, it's not, it's not a good chance, Again? but there's a chance. I can't believe this shit. He might be wearing a disguise. Cool shades, are you wearing a disguise? Yes, it's a hobby of mine. As if waiting for some kind of reaction or response. I'm gonna say, I'm seeing something if I can... To click. It's not happening, though. Who is this guy? I'm seeing if I can talk my way into getting, like, a bonus point on this. Kim, who is this guy? Mm -mm. I'm not getting involved in this. <laughs> got some questions for you. I'm a cop. About what? You don't look like a cop. You know what you look like. Like a man down on his luck. I'm trying real hard here, man. Oh, well, go solve your case, then. That would count as trying hard. Are you asking some questions for me? No. Why not? Don't you have to? No, he doesn't. Oh. <laughs> if I wasn't clinically depressed, I'd burst out laughing. But I'm gonna go with no right now. If you don't want to answer questions, maybe you want to hear me say things. Actually, I don't want to hear you say things. Come on, Jean. Okay, say things. I want to hear you say things. Hi, Jean. Suddenly, out of nowhere, case-related things start popping up in your head. Good job, reaction speed. I'm doing this investigation. A man is hanged. So, do you know who hanged him? Not yet. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, we, we, we nearly do. I don't know. Why are you? I don't know. It's like you felt it would be intellectually stimulating and would lead somewhere. A custom even? Strange. Oh my god, there's more. You want something more? What is it? Huh. Is that a white check? Yes. Huh. Click. Huh. <laughs> there's something that binds you to him. Some kind of an outfit, maybe. A uniform. I understand the uniform is metaphorical. I'm seeing the working class, right? Uh, I want to say, yes. I, <laughs> I don't want to ask that. Then don't. No one's forcing you. Okay, we'll be back. <laughs> we'll be back in the future. <laughs> okay, who are you? You're awesome. Oh, isn't it? Hi, gendarme. Another rendezvous. There he is again, the smoker on the balcony, right here in the whirling in rags. You're here. Hello. Hello, hello. So what brings you here? It's the sports. He's a sports guy. All about that physical prowess and athletic skill. Nothing else here. Nothing. Not a fantastic start to my, uh, my white checks today. I met your Sunday friend. You did? And how did you like him? <laughs> I don't know why Harry has this obsession with this guy, although maybe I do. I don't trust governments. He was magical, magically bureaucratic. I told you, he can be very useful. I guess that's the charm of powerful people. What are you, you two? Friends, I told you. Sunday friends. Friends who like to get together from time to time. What does it mean, a Sunday friend? <sighs> that he won't be there when times get tough, I guess. Oh! So even a friend? It is. On Sundays. The best day. See, people love Sundays. I don't... Saturday and Friday are both demonstrably... I mean, you work on Friday. I work on Saturday. Today's Friday. I'm not working today. Well, this is kind of working. It's very hard for me to know whether this is working. Technically, I get paid but from this channel, but I make about £50 a month or something like that. So I'm not going to say it's my job. And yet it is essentially what I do for a living, is talking over gameplay videos, typically. Um, I'm not working on the main channel today, so... Not on the main channel, on the Best in Slot channel. You know what, if I could flip the two and make this my main channel and make this my source of income, I would do it in a frickin' heartbeat. <laughs> Who is he? A visitor from the First World. He's not like you and me, Gendarme. He can always return to his opportunities in Occident, Sir Leclay. Still, his coming and going brings some life to the village. Or is it just money? I don't know. Why was he staying at your place in the middle of the night? He has keys. 
And he likes the view. To the sea, I mean. None of this, none of you, neither of you are ex explaining the situation. I want to talk about you, buddy. Hmm? What are you doing what here? What about me, gendarme? Admiring the atmosphere. What about you, officer? I'm going to sing karaoke here. Really? Well, I look forward to that. He is very nice. Tell me again about that muscular type who came to investigate the crime. Oh yes, let's see. <clears throat> he knocked on my door a few days after the lynching. I think he was going through the entire building, asking questions. What did you tell him? Nothing. That I didn't see anything. He believed you? Why shouldn't he? Did you tell him about your friend? What friend? <laughs> your Sunday friend, the witness. No, I don't think it came up. Both of them are so obnoxious at times. What did he look like? Muscular, handsome, strong, like one of those military types. Was he alone? Yes, but he was speaking to someone on his earpiece. What was he saying? Just reporting back whatever I was telling him. Besides muscular, did he have any other identifying traits? Oh, uh, let me think. He had an accent. He sounded like one of those mercenaries. He sounded vaguely Oranese. No, not vaguely, scratch that. He sounded definitely Oranese. Thank you. Sure. Anything else on your mind? Bye-bye, gendarme. Bye-bye, gendarme. Okay. Um, I'm gonna have... Right, right. I'm just, I'm just gonna talk to Looks Titus. Like the circus left town, but the clowns are still here. I'm not a clown. I'm the entire goddamn circus, son. The circus not going anywhere. Oh, I've got to pull skills into authority to try again. I found somebody who saw the hanging. A witness. A witness? You ain't got shit. The locals would never come to you with this. That's what you know. That's just Koptakti status. Next, he's gonna tell you one of us already roll on the others. And he's in witness protection. My witness isn't a local. Well, let's hear it then. Who is your mystery fella? I tell you that so you can go kill him. <laughs> this goes without saying. But nonetheless... Don't give out his name. Who he is is irrelevant. It's like you said, Al. Copper's coming up with this on the spot. There is no witness. I've seen this shit a million times, Titus. Fly fishing. They are desperate. Tell us, Copper. What wacky claims did he make? I want very specific information to prove the validity of the... Because I'm trying to establish my authority over them, right? Without actually giving away too much information. The witness said he saw two people of Arrow Page descent and one mesk. Arrow Page? <laughs> Boss, I think he's trying to say me and Theo. Well, yeah. What is confusing you? Eugene, Theo, and Elaine were there too. I already told you. We were all there. It's a fair point, though. No shouting, no commotion. It's you assholes that feel the need to go around like a fucking brass band. The Hardy Boys are dead silent. Yeah, it's like they put cowbells on you before they send you to the streets. What's with the cowbells, policemen? Well, as they said in memes I never understood 20 years ago, you always need more cowbell. They're avoiding having to answer this question. Hmm. I'd imagine you guys drinking and singing lynching songs. What's with the funeral silence? We were drinking, weren't we, guys? I hit the bottle hard. I was drunk as fuck. Right, I'm convinced, Glenn. Nothing off here. Just a regular hanging. That means absolutely nothing to me. Sounds like some made-up horseshit. It means the whole scene was long and drawn out, like it was from a film. What is this fella's problem? Sorry we didn't make it more action-packed. It wasn't the first thing on our minds, you see? Shanky, it's Shanky, right? I thought there's something wrong about the lynching story. Now I know there was. You don't know shit! <laughs> I know you are lying, Shenki. Great witness. Okay, maybe it doesn't feel like this did anything to them, but they have to be fretting a little. Everyone is afraid of witnesses. Witness is a scary word. So much bluster to hide the fact that they're uncomfortable with you having this info. Wait, why's that got worse? <laughs> I swear that's got worse. I mean, I've, I've found a witness, so I've got a little extra, but my god, 16 authority. However, however, however. I'm 
My authority is minus one for my clothing, and I believe I have got minus two if I wanted. I believe I do have clothes that would add to my. I'm gonna wear this instead. Am I? Yeah. No. <laughs> just, no, just no. Do I have anything that adds to authority? Why does that not increase my authority? The conical hat. The comical conical hat. Anyways, I don't- I mean, so I could gain plus one if I wanted, but it's not really gonna make a difference, is it? Mmm. The luxury of fine things. Just look at those black monk straps. After spending an entire day hustling, who's to say that you didn't deserve a pair of ridiculously expensive shoes on your tired feet? Beautiful things make people happy. Beautiful things give you a rush. It's power. Craft in your style, draping your flesh in silk and leather, deciding how to present yourself to the world. Remember, when they come to take it away from you, you worked for those shoes. Whether you like it or not, wearing these shoes has made you more liberal. Ultra-liberal. They're either a gateway drug or a booster pack to get you deeper into free market ideology. Wow, you work hard. I, I do? Oh, yes. You hustle. You're a provider. It's tough out there, but you keep it real and provide. I, I guess I do, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like a horse. A workhorse. For hard work. Well, what hard work do I do exactly? Look at yourself. You're a human pedometer. You must have walked 200,000 steps down cracked <clears throat> asphalt, mosaic, sand, and linoleum after you re-emerged. That is the sign of a hustler who never gives up. The world is harsh and people are evil. You didn't make it that way. And you won't let it break you. You ride. Fucking ride till I die, bitch. That's just what it's like. <laughs> Life and death. But you got gills on your side, baby. Got those black papers with the faces of the innocents on them. You bring in the Franco Negros and the Solas. It ain't easy, but you do it. Day in and day out. You didn't make the rules, but you won't lose. You're a cop and a sprinter and a money printer. Pawn yourself off on the Yeah. You're in the sales business. Shake them for shit and then pawn it off. Law officer style. Made some kills, sure. 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 And has it been easy? Is life easy? Have you not gone into cardiac arrest? Are you not about to have an anxiety attack or shoot yourself in the mouth? But you still hustle 24-7, ride or die. Now, ask yourself, are you rich? No. That's right. You work harder than anyone. You almost rode yourself to the grave and you're still practically a hobo. <laughs> Why is that? The system is broken. Boo-hoo. The system is broken. The establishment is keeping me down. That's not the fuck here attitude you're used to. What is this? Why are you so poor? I don't know. Help me, Savoir. Why am I so poor? Because of the taxes. Ah. G-Man's got his jam-covered sticky fingers in your pocket, stealing from you every time you buy, sell, walk, talk, fart, so much as sneeze. Our tax is almost non-existent in the Gossam estate that is Revachon. I thought there were no taxes, Savoir. You and I both, but they got those indirect modes of taxation. Sales tax, excise duty, extraction tax. This tax that doesn't even have a name. Plus, there's the stuff people in other countries pay for that makes them ask for more money from you here. The Gossam Estate's a myth. In total, the coalition government is taking 98% of all <laughs> your money. <laughs> Guess I'm a free market fundamentalist now. Here you go, hustler. Fight the righteous fight. Free the people. Keep it real. Keep it street. Keep foaming at the mouth furiously on the tax issue. 
I did not expect <laughs> quite so much to come about from um, <clears throat> um, um <laughs> from putting a pair of shoes on. I mean, I mean, I support taxation, so <laughs> this is very difficult. All taxation is theft. Well, no, but we need to fund. The problem with taxation isn't taxation in and of itself. The problem with taxation is imbalanced taxation. I've got nothing to say to you. Why are you wasting your time? Just in that the rich are not being taxed sufficiently. You look at companies like Amazon who paid like zero pounds in tax in the UK and Starbucks and take that and I'm just popping in the random ones that have popped into my mind but there's so many companies and corporations dodging tax via various methods that we could greatly expand S schools and the NHS and all that kind of jazz the regular people should be taxed less the mega rich should be taxed more I honestly think if you're like a billionaire you should be taxed like 80% because People will be like, oh, I earned that money. No, you, no billionaire on the planet has ever earned that money. <laughs> Just point that out there. There is not a single billionaire on the planet who has earned that money. They shouldn't exist. It should be illegal to be a billionaire. It should not be physically possible to hoard that much wealth when you could save the lives of hundreds of thousands of people with that cash. It is morally reprehensible. Never mind a billionaire. 100 million, 10 million... Anyways, and I, I'm, I'm all for self, like, I, 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 part of me is fairly capitalist in that you should be able to work hard and be intelligent, uh, and even that's a little harsh, like, why, like, you, there's a genetic in component to intelligence, so why should intelligent people get more money than non-intelligent people? Who's to say who adds more value to society? People will be like, oh, well, you're just a shop worker or you work at McDonald's or whatever. But then when you go to McDonald's, if there's no one working at Ma McDonald's, you're not going to get your fucking McDonald's, are you, bucko? So <laughs> trying to judge people's relative impact on society is nonsense. And the fact is the richest people have less positive impact on society than most of the people in the middle sort of area. It's the middle class, really, who props us. Middle class and working class who props society up. Working class more so than anyone else. And yet they're paid the worst, so... I, I do believe that if you really work hard, because at the end of the day, some people do work harder than other people, and there should be compensation for that. I think if you work hard and try and yada yada, you should get paid well, and you should get paid better. And I want to do well. You know, I've got plans for my future, investing and all this kind of jazz. Not doing well at it quite yet, but that is there is plans in place. But... You know, it's just so I can be comfortable and look after a prospective family and all that kind of jazz. It's not to hoard wealth like some fucking miserly dragon. Anyways, are you Lizzie, Elizabeth, Miss Beaufort? I suggest not wasting time on trivial pleasantries and focusing on why you are actually here. Titus Hardy. Easy Leo told me about you. He likes to talk a lot. You are not here to chat up the legal counsel. You are here to question these men. Okay, we'll talk later. <laughs> What a nice, fun, wholesome conversation to start the day. Right. Right, 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 right. It's raining. That's very exciting. Um, So, we could head up to the northwest, but... But... I'm much too excited about the prospect. Crossing over this bridge. Don't remember where it is, but it's here somewhere. Where's the map? It's down that way, I think. No, I don't have a bloody clue. Let's walk around till we... If we follow the curvature of the water, we'll find it. Right? I, do, I remember it. I just don't remember where it is. The thing is, I don't think we ever came down here, as we talked about in the last video. So it's probably not down here, so I should probably turn back. That's the fishing village, I think. Which I definitely want to go explore, but I've just unlocked this whole new area. And the whole new area means... I can pick bottles <laughs> up, which is very important to me and my sustainability. I don't know. I, I, I've got very conflicting political views on capitalism. Because I do believe in self... You know, that you... Man deserves the sweat of his brow and all this Andrew Ryan nonsense. 
The shine on these sunglasses lasts a lifetime, officer. 100% guaranteed. Huh. Why is there no voice? Ah, I see. A pair of water blue shades. The writing on the left temple says, Sub-insulindic rendezvous. The frame appears to be hand-carved out of bone. Oh, very interesting choice, officer. Very high culture. Well, that's me. Cultured. This is how a sea monster sees the world. You've become a sea monster, Harry. Giant, hidden, and strangely tender at heart. All is blue. All right. But these actually make your vision worse. It's like literally being underwater. Wow, officer. You look so cool. <laughs> I love this guy. The street vendor has picked up his pace again as you observe the world through deep sea tinted lenses. And they can be yours for a mere three real. My regular customers have passed them all up because they've got no taste. But you found them. What do you think, Kim? The lieutenant tilts his head and steps back, eyes narrowed in a thorough examination. It's a case to him. You look like a musician, like a blind musician. But you could do worse. Take them if you want. Minus one perception, plus one inland empire. Those don't seem very useful. I mean, maybe they are. May, it's good to know where they are. Like, maybe later on, there's a check for inland empire, a white check. I want to pass. So we come back and we grab the glasses. But I'm not going to worry about it in the meantime. If we go over here. You keep coming back. That's good, officer. Keep browsing those clothes. Keep saving that economy. <laughs> You find your hands deep in tattered and faded garments. The books economical, but the speakers below are banged up and worthless. The sneakers triumph over them. They're the star of the. Okay, obviously we've clicked all that before. So, if you haven't watched the entirety of every single episode, it might be uh, new, but that's your fault, not mine. <laughs> right, where the hell is this bridge? Who are these people? Who are you people? What is this? Oh, that's the bridge. What's this? What is this? Hello? Have I been inside you before? Oh, it's the pawn shop. Oh, right. So I want to think about the pawn shop. Is there anything I want to sell? Like, is there anything I'm probably never going to wear again? Like, I just feel like having all these options is good for variety. Let's breathe the core, shivers. I'm just, I just want to know if any of them are useless, but whenever I've got a check going forward... Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what I can... I, don't, I, I feel uncomfortable selling things. Because what if they're worth a lot? I like the gun. Can I sell the gun? Sell the gun? I feel like I can sell the gun. It wouldn't be a big deal, you know? And yet, part of me does not want to sell the gun. What if I need the gun? You know? What if I need the gun, ladies and gentlemen? You never know when you'll need a broken gun. Right, okay, I found the bridge thing. It's over here. So this should work now, right? A rusting control panel with you. You grab the handle and pull the lever up. As <clears> soon <throat> as the metal connects against the contact pins, you hear a loud clunk. Then, the water lock starts moving. Oh, it's spilled the drink everywhere. Fantastic. Oh, look at that beauty. Away with you, bottle. I have no need for you, you cad. Alright. Oh. Again, there's something so textured and tactile, you know, about this world. Okay, if we ever need to get to the coast, then this is the way. But please, contain your wanderlust for now. I don't want us to get sidetracked, not with everything that's going on. Focus on one thing, achieve it, then the next, he thinks. That's the task chain. Oh. All right, you know what? Because it's all on this side of the island, let's go, let, let's go to that fishing village sort of area next. Because it makes sense to clear, well, at least from my perspective, clear inverted commas. Oh, I need to, um, oh, I completely forgot to check the number. That's what we need to do as well. We need to run the numbers. Inside, you see a set I of know. steering levers, a radio microphone. This is precinct 57. How may I assist you? Did you find out more about the owner of the armored boots? Sorry, sir. I still haven't heard back from the database people. 
Try calling again later. Is there anything else I can do for you? Just a second, officer. Sylvie Malaika on the line for you, officer. Yes. Hello? Hey, Sylvie. Oh, great. What oh. else do you need to do? You hear the... Anything I'm, else I'm I can... Just, just a moment. Sing as if you knew. Come in, officer. Roger that. Okay, no. God damn it. They really don't want me to, to get this. Call Alice back in a day. Call Alice back in a day. Call Alice back in a day. Um. Okay, so... Who is Renee? I still don't know who Renee is. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so let, let's head up to that, that section in the northwest. Oh, I forgot I can zoom out like a madman now. I, look at that. Look how zoomed I am. Actually, this is going to be really helpful. I'm trying to find new areas. Although they've got like this uh, fog of war effect going on. What it does mean is I can click less because I can click miles away because you want to double click to, to sprint. Okay, so. What's this? This is not a fishing village. This is a single fishing boat. Oh, there was a thing on the, um, I think it's, uh, Volition. Increases your, um, your morale by an extra point. Which I'm tempted by. It came up on one of the, uh, loading screens. Docking reserved for residents of Wu de Sajalaja for the airport, Um, I wonder if the fishing village is on the other side, then. It must be over there, right by the church. Must be. I'm only over here because Kitsuragi gave me a little comment, you know? Looks like there was more construction here once, decades ago. So who is this lass on the boat? Your room in the whirling isn't much bigger than the sloop. This is worth more than you'll ever learn in your life. Hello, rich person. A striking woman leans against the cabin top of her sailing boat. Smiling as you approach, her green raincoat glistens with droplets. A silk scarf is tied around her throat. I do. I mean, I'm. I. Can't, I. Open water scares me a little bit because I nearly drowned when I was a kid, and it kind of messed me up. But the idea of like being able to disappear on a boat for a little while, you know, maybe just like a few weeks on my own, just go sail out in the middle of nowhere, do a bit of writing. Get hit by a storm and die. <laughs> it sounds lovely, honestly. I do tend to romanticise that kind of thing quite a lot. Good morning, officers. I'm Joyce. Hey, Joyce. Joyce L. Messier. I represent the board of Wild Pines, the owners of the harbour. You gentlemen must be from the RCM. Interesting. Joyce L., what's the L stand for? Beaten. My maiden name. Her bony hand dangles from the sleeve of her oversized raincoat. Give us away. Nothing, honestly. I've said it to every drunk in town, and you're the first one who's responded. Wow, Joyce. <laughs> no need for the drive-by at the start of the conversation. Relax. She meant it in jest. I was wondering what this was as I was looking at it. Shake her hand. I'm glad to see you here. Her grip is tight and cold. I was dispatched to handle a strike, not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the RCM in this matter, I will. Gladly. Well, it's one of your people who's dead, right? That is good to hear, madame. My colleague will take the lead on this interview. I should let you know that he is recovering from an unusual medical episode. Very unusual. But I can assure you of his ultimate competency. I just want to check something. What am I struggling with here? Physical instrument, okay. 14 hours away. So, what, half 10 tonight? Um, She is... The... She's not the owner. What is she again? The Board of Wild Pines. Okay, so Wild Pines is the dock. The dock is currently being... Okay, so she's... Yeah, I mean, she's on the opposite side of... Ertret, or whatever his name is. Basically, so... Wait, is it her people who've died? Let me think about this. She is on the board for Wild Pines. Wild Pines is the harbour, dock, shipping kind of people. The shipping workers are currently striking for the last few months at the docks and have shut the docks down. 
The scabs outside are the ones who came to steal the work. The one who died, I think, was a mercenary hired by Wild Pines to control the scabs and the rabble. No, no, because the, the scabs and Wild Pines are on the same side, so... The mercenary... I can't wrap my head around this. Which side are the Hardy Boys on? I feel like they're Union. Right? So the mercenary was a scab. Trying to probably quell the insurrection. So that Wild Pines could get back to business. Okay, so the person who died would have been working for her. Just had to get, I just had to wrap my head around <laughs> the factions. There's a trace of irony in his voice. Mischief, even. This is a tactic. How interesting. I wish you a swift recovery. In the meanwhile, <laughs> you have my full cooperation. And the full cooperation of the Wild Pines group. <laughs> I just like the idea, like, it's a serious interview. And then he just looks, like, really drawn out, looks at him and goes, You're on a boat. <laughs> like, it's a revelation. Why, yes, I am. Not a lot of people on boats, are there? Of course there are. We're on an archipelago. How else are you supposed to get around? <laughs> we're on an archipelago? Yes, we are. We are on Le Caillou. For we are on Revachol. We are. And the city of Revachol is on the island of Le Caillou. Sounds a little like annoyed there. Still, I haven't seen anyone else sail, sail a boat around here. I haven't seen anyone else drive a souped-up Coupri Kenema motor carriage either. Fair point, Joyce. Actually... That motor carriage has been specially issued to serve as a patrol and pursuit vehicle. It's for crossing long distances in the Greater Ravachol Industrial Harbour. It's not a toy. Neither is this. A toy, I mean. It's a machine for crossing long distances in the Bay of Ravachol, between the city and the islands. You need to make this lady admit she's only riding around on this boat because she's rich. Why, Rhetoric? Please show your working. Why what? Stop thinking. Take her down. <laughs> no! Why am I thinking about this? I've got police work to do. Leave me alone. Your way. <laughs> Does she have a name? The boat? No. It is called Cordelati 19 because that's the type of sloop it is. What kind of boat is it? It's a pleasure craft. A 19 pacer. It also happens to be rated for Category 1 racing. Though these days I mainly use it for business. It is a nice little boat. How do you like it? My sloop? I like it a lot. It's the eel's hips, baby. Okay. I'm enjoying this part of the interview. It has so little to do with the mother <laughs> <industry. laughs> Man, how is this game so funny to me? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's so sarcastic. Do you have a license for this boat? Of course she has a license for the boat. Officer. I assure you, I'm a highly qualified pleasure craft operator. I bet you are, Joyce. The crowns of her teeth are porcelain, white as the boat's hull as she smiles. Qualified pleasure craft operator. So charming. Where's the damn license? Why wouldn't it be? This is Revachol, Wayfair Act and all. Anyone can drive a boat. We don't need to see a bloody license. <laughs> I think I have a handle on the boat Good. thing. Tell me more about Wild Pines. What do you do? What we do? I'm afraid I don't speak for Wild Pines as a whole. It, it's a giant undertaking. There was a touch of discomfort there. She wants to merely represent. So what do they do? The Pines' core competency is logistics. Container shipping, freight, that sort of thing. See those airships there, blinking? Those are the shipping side of things, and that is the terminal. Another subdivision deals with energy, oil and gas exploration, offshore platforms. The Wild Pines Group is one of the original Revacholian Indo tribes. Companies awarded royal monopolies by the king, the suzerain himself, centuries ago. The king is long gone, but several of the Indo tribes remain. Who are the other Indo tribes? Son Baptiste, L U M, an unknown entity known as brightest star. Even a good company, it seems. Why, thank you. She does not register the real meaning of the remark. How much money does Wild Pines have? Do I really want to ask this question? I'm not at liberty to discuss the company balance sheet, but I can tell you that last year, 
The company booked more than 20 billion real in revenue. It's quite a lot. A billion? <laughs> That's it. I thought Wild Pines was supposed to be big time. <laughs> wow. 20 billion is a large number. But the conglomerate employs 72,000 people. They all need to be paid. Then there are capital improvements, interest payments. <clears throat> a wave hits the sloop. She grasps the mainstay for balance. A conglomerate the size of the wild pines is like a shark. If it stops moving, it will die. Then what becomes of those 72,000 families? It's a tremendous responsibility. Yeah, no, I don't... I don't think anyone of a company that size really thinks about that. We see the, the wanton nature of layoffs that big companies do. Like, if you're a small business and you hire 10 people, firing a couple of people is a much bigger deal than laying off 20% of your workforce if you hire 100,000 people. It, it's the thing about, you know, one death is a tragedy, a, a thousand deaths is a statistic, and it, it counts for all of these things as well. <clears throat> firing 10,000 people is... If you're in a position to fire, let's say you're in a position to fire a thousand people, you are not going around and firing a thousand people. You're checking a number on a sheet somewhere and you're ticking a list or whatever you're doing. You're doing it via a sheet, you're doing it via a spreadsheet, you're doing it via a document and other people are firing them or you're sending out an email, right? You're firing two people, which could be the same relative amount of your company's workforce and that's going to be a very personal, painful conversation. So. Yeah. Where does Wild Pine get all these billions? They started as an exploration and cargo fleet conducting trade between the Samaran and Insulindian Easterlers 250 years ago, when pine ships explored the South Seminese and charted Lomantang on behalf of the suzerain. Can you say Lomantang again? It was beautiful. Centuries of care, deliberation and madness have gone into this endeavour. Vessels pass through the great unrest to re-emerge with apricots in tow. The logic of the system is totalizing. It's taken everything from its employees to build it. And why are you here in Revishal? You mean aside from being the terminal's legal owners? Who are responsible for moving 8% of the world's cargo? I mean, the company, the workers do it. We built this district. We. There it is. She owns up to it. All the best parts of it. Rue de saint Gislain, with its bastions. The plazas, meteor and mosaic. Even some of the old street lamps have been put back thanks to the investments from the WP. She points behind you where the sea wall rises. Before Martinez was swallowed by the industrial harbour, even before it was part of Revachol, long before Terminal B was erected here, the Pines built it as a resort for its Revacholian employees. A company getaway for a weekend or a summer holiday. Then came the revolution. But that's another matter. I'm here to make sure the Pines can fulfill their responsibilities to the place they built. With your help, hopefully, says her warm tone. What can you tell me about the strike? Everything. Right up to, but not including, trade secrets. Well, if I want to hear the trade secrets... First, you'd have to repeal the Emergencies Act of Trade and Elements. That gives me the right to silence. It's quite the octopus. How do I... <laughs> I wouldn't want to disturb an octopus. I'm glad you see it that way. To repeal the Act would mean repealing the Coalition Government. The one that leases you the right to police West Revachol. You'd be shooting yourself in the foot, in other words. Alright, I get the idea. But I am <laughs> derailing us. You wanted to know about the strike. Yes, what is your role in this precisely? I believe the official title is Senior Labour Negotiator. In practice, I'm a grocery clerk. I relay the union's demands to Wild Pines and return with Wild Pines' counteroffer. And how are the talks going? They're not. That's the problem. The union stopped all negotiations a week ago, after that awful lynching took place. Now they won't even let me into the harbour. There's a 2 meter 20 racist behemoth blocking the gates. You mean Jean-Luc? My race mentor, he's a great teacher. No, we're not saying that. How were the talks going before the lynching? Let's say I was not making the kind of progress I'd hoped for when I first arrived. And when did you first arrive? I arrived three weeks ago. Yes, in the middle of February. The bay was still partially frozen then. I prefer to do these things on site, like the RCM. But the strike began in... December. I wasn't the original negotiator here. 
I took over after Mr. Gaumont hit a wall with Mr. Clare, the union boss. Mr. Clare refused to speak with Gaumont despite concessions he granted the union in prior negotiations. This isn't the first time the union has gone on strike? Heavens no. There have been two prior strikes. Both times the union won significant concessions, including overtime pay and a medical plan. This time their demands are more, I guess you could say, aggressive. I mean, overtime pay and a medical plan both seem like fairly standard things to me. I guess I get neither, technically. Ludicrous, even. <clears throat> it's meant. What happened to this gourmand? Mr. Clare told him to... How did he put it? She pauses to compose herself. Fuck off, midget. <laughs> Gaumont is short of stature, you see. Not cool. Keep in mind, this is a negotiator Mr. Clare has worked with before, and who was more than fair with him and the union. What are their demands? There are leaflets everywhere, and banners. What did they say again? Oh yes, every worker, a member of the board. Most of the workers probably don't know what that means. I like it. Then you might also like their other slogan. Demand democracy. Nope, that's weak. Personally, I agree. It lacks the pizzazzo of every worker a member of the board. What's the demand though? What do they mean? It's quite simple, you see. Every time the Wild Pines group makes a decision about what? About anything, really. It needs the signature of each of the 2,200 workers in its Martinez terminal. Just so you understand, this is but one of 22 terminals owned by Wild Pines. Essentially, not only are they kings of the company, they are also kings of the 72,000 employees of Wild Pines Group. The workers can't be kings. The king is king. No, see, okay, I mean, I'm all for... I mean, that is unrealistic, right, what they're asking for. I'm all for workers grabbing more, but... At the end of the day, you don't run the company. Then again, you should see more... I mean, yeah, but you should get paid more. And if the company does well, you should see benefit from that. But it doesn't mean you need to be involved in every decision-making process. There are people in place who are put there because they're better suited to making said decisions. They should be allowed to vote in on matters relevant to themselves. I don't know. To an extent, I think... <sighs> If I owned a company, well I do, I own my company, but I'm the only employee. <laughs> but I mean, if I own a company, it's my company to decide what I want to do with it. People don't have to work for me. That doesn't justify things like underpaying people and stuff like that. Um, there's a big thing at the moment where everyone's like, oh, nobody wants to work anymore. Yeah, but you're all paying terrible fucking money. What do you expect? What are you going to do? I'm not sure. Naturally, I assume that was just their opening position. A hard-nosed tactic with a side of mockery. But there's been no follow-up, just the same nonsensical slogan repeated over and over again. And now, people are getting lynched, I hear. Behind the whirling in rags. A disastrous situation if there ever was one. Excuse me, from whom did you hear about this lynching? I first heard it from the boyer at the gates. The one whose very name advertises his aversion to work. I think he said it was, call me manana. This checks out. The scabs at the gate. Did you put them there? The scabs? You mean the huddled masses of Jamrock come to plead for work where the union refuses to? If they were organized by Wild Pines or its affiliates, then it would be a company secret. I could not share it with you. Not right now, at least. It's implied. She's open to discussing this matter with you at a later occasion. Interesting. What do you think of Everard? Everard Clare is a man of the utmost integrity. If you can say one thing about him, it's that he always puts the interests of the workers first. Really? Of course not. <laughs> Everard is fantastically corrupt. I imagine he has a thick, viscous goo where you and I have blood. Yeah, I mean, I have kind of picked up on that, to be fair. He is the most corrupt individual I have ever seen, and I deal with men like him for a living. If there is anyone more venal, more irredeemably nepotistic than it's his twin brother, Edgar. There are two of him? Yes. Edgar looks exactly like his brother, except for that lazy eye. He also talks exactly like Everard does. And when one's term as foreman is up, the other takes over. It's how they circumvent the term limits, you see, with a funny little switcheroo. 
While in office, they've embezzled God knows how much of their workers' dues. What about the union itself outside the Brothers Clare? The Daybarders Union was once a perfectly normal institution. 20 years ago, anyway. It must not have been easy to establish under the Emergency Act. But they did it. I can respect that. Organised labour at its best, as they say. Then something happened in the local chapter elections. The Brothers Clare came and transformed it into a... How do you say? She hesitates, looking for the right expression. A mob. The Debardeurs are a crime syndicate. Sad as it may be, we are forced to cooperate with them. Refreshingly honest, officer. The company has tried appeasing in the past, but I'm afraid our concessions have only emboldened Evrat and his brother. And your opinion, detective? If I may ask. I'm a curious and talkative person, you see. Would you say the Debardeurs union is... <coughs> See, I, I, I'm very much in two minds because, again, union and unionization, unionization, great thing, good thing, all for unions where possible. But like any corporation with a figurehead or someone in charge and someone handling the money, there is obviously prime scope for corruption. And we know already Everard is corrupt. Now, we don't necessarily know it in terms of him taking money from his workers, but we've already had him, you know, with the gun and him wanting us to open the door, like to break in someone's door. You know, we know Everard is corrupt, and that's the problem. So the union, as an idea, might be valid. I'm sure there's tons of workers in the union who are good people who just want better pay and decent benefits for the hard work they do, which is very fair enough. That doesn't mean it's not corrupt at the top, which goes for the vast majority of organisations on the planet, quite frankly. <laughs> In your opinion, Detective, an effective advocate for the rights of local working men, a giant leech sucking the life out of Revachol, socialist mob. Oh, God. I feel like I should offer it. I feel like I need to keep her on side. Do I need to give my own socialist mob? Thank you for being candid. Sadly, Wild Pines have cooperated with what amounts to a crime syndicate for two decades. However much you feed the wolf... The wolf always hungers. Part of me is like, I should always be true to myself, but the exact answer I would say isn't really there. They were both very one side or the other, whereas I'd probably sit somewhere in the middle, realistically. Um, if in doubt, you know, if it's picking from bad options, go with the one that's going to make the person you're talking to happiest, right? Because that's what you should do. As a police officer, as anyone, when you're trying to get what you want, this is a... This right here is a transactional relationship at the end of the day. One more thing, you said something happened in the elections? I'm glad you asked. There was a woman, the previous forewoman of the union. She disappeared. Interest. Wait, did I level up, by the way? No. Interesting. We are looking for a woman, potentially. Disappeared? Yes. On the last day of the local chapter elections, her daughter phoned in and said she wasn't running anymore. Or coming to work. Ever. End of story. Eerie. Downright haunting, if you ask me. The Wild Pines suspected foul play, but what could they do? It was a union matter. It is very important to keep in mind that Wild Pines is inevitably not innocent in this. It's all very easy to hear one side of an argument and someone's very reasonable and everyone seems like a corrupt weirdo <laughs> and think, yeah, well, Wild Pines good, union bad, but it, the reality is never going to be that simple. The point of the presentation is... These kinds of things happen around the Clares. Watch out when you're dealing with him. Thank you for your concern, ma'am. We'll be just fine. Of course. How else can I help? I have to talk to everyone, Claire. You have? And how did you like Mr. Clare? Finally. Time to choose sides. Bloody hell. <clears throat> I didn't. He's a beautiful man. Beautiful and just. <laughs> Everett Clare is a hero of the workers' movement and he's a champion of Swarm Field 2. I'm a really bad communist. Bloated rainbow socialist. I can do business with him for a socialist he's reasonable. <laughs> he's not the champion I've chosen. Don't phrase this as socialism slash communism versus capitalism because although that is kind of what both sides represent, it's not how I want to take this direction. It's... <sighs> Championing, championing workers' rights is very, very important. That doesn't make him a good person. There is... It's like, you see this all the time with revolution, right? A, a, a city 
with a corrupt government, there'll be a revolution, they'll instill their own people, and then that government will inevitably end up corrupt down the line as well, and there'll have to be another revolution, and it's just an endless cycle over and over and over again. We see it in politics right now. All major politics are corrupt at some level, because power corrupts people. And it's all well and good for us to sit here and say, no, we would never do it, but the fact is I think most people who don't end up in that position think they wouldn't do it until they end up in that position, and then suddenly they're doing good. Um... I'd like to think we wouldn't. Not everyone does, of course. My point is, it's not capitalism, socialism, communism. It's it's just power. It's just institutions. It's why you can't have too much power in one figurehead. It's why you can't have these monarchistic leaders of these organizations. Who am I, by the way? <laughs> I have so many views I didn't realize. I have the feeling the international community does not approve of him. That seems like a good middle ground answer. Oh, come on now. He has his uses. How else would he have stayed in power all these years? Or wait, actually, corruption. That's how he's done it. Fantastic, verm-like corruption. Reaching into the bowels of the earth. Vum. The position of my unusual colleague does not reflect official policy. I hope you understand. The RCM does not pick sides. I didn't pick sides, Kisaragi. That's what I was trying to do. Of course. And I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I'm not a corrupt verm myself. However, if you felt like discussing something, how could I stop you? Are we not human? Are we not curious to hear another person's take? It's only natural. We would only be gossiping. You're a slimy little worm like he is, aren't you? Intellectually <laughs> speaking, it would be quite interesting to hear what she has to say about these things. Tell her she'll like you for it. I want her to like, he's helping me find my gun. Is that something I could, that seems like something I could tell her. Oh. That's so helpful of him. Hmm. The lieutenant looks at you and you can swear his jaw muscle is trembling. Unconventional police officers sometimes lose their guns. They then go around and tell people about this to gauge their reactions. It's all part of detecting. <laughs> incredible. Simply incredible. And how is it going? Has this detecting produced a gun? No. Well, maybe he's not as helpful as you thought then. Is there anything else? No, I'm just a little bit there. Of course, detective. Should something come up later down the road, don't be afraid to drop by for a I chat. Have, I have just realized what I said, yes. I'm the, the detective you should trust and chat to. And also I lost my gun. <laughs> Until then, is there anything I can help you with? Yeah, I feel stupid. What can you tell me about this lynching? Quite a few things, I'm afraid. She falls silent for a moment, contemplating. Kids are just, <laughs> just like, what the fuck are you doing? Shut up, shut up, shut up. The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to ask for your names and badge numbers. Um. Of course, ma'am. We should have introduced ourselves. I am Lieutenant Kitsuragi from Precinct 57, and this is my colleague from Precinct 41, Detective Dubois. I'm afraid Harry doesn't have his badge at the moment. I hope mine will suffice. Oh, and what happened to yours, Detective? I remember my partner told you I'd recently suffered an unusual medical episode and my lost badge is related to it. I see. So are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? I could have eaten it for all I know. I don't remember anything. This world, this city, nothing. I'm just going to say yes. I can't hear you, darling. Speak oh. Up, oh, no. It's possible after a night of heavy drinking, I lost all memory of my life in the world. I'm, let's, let's, let's exclude the drinking. Oh, dear. Some kind of encephalopathic amnesia. I don't even know how to respond. I do believe you, naive as that may sound. I simply can't imagine what you gain by faking such a condition. As I said, ma'am, his technique may be very unconventional, but he is an officer of the RCM. Of course, I sympathize. 
but I'm afraid I simply can't share anything more until I've seen that badge. She's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement. Okay, suggestion. Of Let's course. see what we can do. But before we do, officers, let me be perfectly clear. The situation is extremely volatile. The sooner we can speak about this lynching business, the better for all of us. Of course, detective. Okay. Suggestion is currently not on there whatsoever. Do we have... Okay, there we go. Stick that on. That's plus one. Physical instruments, shivers, conceptualization, trauma, electrical chemistry, electrical chemistry, reaction speed, suggestion minus one. Composure, drama. You really should be able to organize these somehow. Okay, so that's the only thing I've got. <clears throat> so we're gonna we're gonna try the white check. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, we'll come back after we've leveled it up by one. Uh, we'll end it there. So the next video, we will finish the conversation with Joyce, and then we'll head over to the western part of the island, probably. Until then, thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you lovely folks very soon. Cheers, much love as always. Bye-bye.